whole area just went quiet. And all we heard was the, the JU-52 coming over, and then you saw the parachutes coming down. They came from about 300 feet. Mick Costelli recalling the day in 1941 that changed his life forever. The day the Crete sun brought wave after wave of German paratroopers drifting down over the olive groves. Sixty years on, Mick Costelli still knows the streets he once fought on. Buildings now hide some of the olive groves, but not the post of his local commander. I, I think that building there was Kippenberger's headquarters. Over there? That one there. Yeah. Mick and his mate Sonny Sewell got an early education in Crete. It was the kind they wouldn't wish on anybody. Sonny had just had his 17th birthday when he met those German paratroopers head on. So he fixed bayonets, he then blew his whistle and the charge commenced. Today they're trying to spot a site where history is written in blood, mostly German blood. A short distance away they find it. Galatas Hill, one of the many where New Zealanders proved they were a match for Hitler's military elite. Before the Battle for Crete, Galatas Hill was mostly known for its cemetery which was fitting perhaps because when the Germans decided to drop in on the New Zealanders via parachute, death was waiting for them on a horrific scale. Mick, what went through your mind when you looked up and you suddenly saw the sky filled with Germans? The first thing that happened after was one jumped straight down in front of us. He just got out of his parachute and jumped straight down in front of us. But all the rest we got on the way there. It was kill or be killed. Not far away, Sonny got his first bayonet charge. I um, reluctant to look at food for quite a while after that. Not that there was much food there, but uh, and I had one or two sleepless nights. You'd hear the agony of screaming men who'd been bayoneted. And it's not a pretty sight, not a pretty sight at all. It was frightening, it really was. It was frightening at the time, yeah. I wasn't a brave soldier, but it was, it was frightening. Them coming down out of the sky and at you. Some of them were firing their, their machine guns as they come down. One man who was coming at them was Monsignor Herman Volk. Today, a churchman, then he was a paratrooper. He captured a Kiwi machine gun nest right on Malemi Airport. I have taken them out of the war. <laughs> Brave, but not enough to save 4,000 of his elite storm regiment, honoured by comrades in their final resting place. Fear was simply against orders. This, the day you jumped, were you scared? Have the angst? No. No. Why not? Warum nicht? I have an auftrag. I had an order to jump. <laughs> that was clear. I had to have had the order. A third of his company was drowned. It should have been a defeat for the Germans, but for some reason the New Zealanders were ordered to pull back from the airport. And within 11 days, these Germans had taken the island. Something this major in your lives, traumatic and everything, must have stayed with you for many years in your daily life. Did you think back much on it, on it over the years, Sonny? Well. I suppose for me it uh, just proved the futility of war.